section 9.2, the Pythagorean Theorem. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use the Pythagorean Theorem in order to solve for missing measures, and you should also be able to identify Pythagorean triples. The Pythagorean Theorem is probably one of the most famous geometry theorems, and many of us already know it. Well, what it actually says is that in a right triangle, the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the sides. So taking a look at our diagram, we have a right triangle, and our hypotenuse is represented by C and will always be C. The other legs will be A and B. And if you take the length of C, square it, it'll be equal to A squared plus B squared. And that's our Pythagorean theorem. You can use the Pythagorean theorem in order to solve for um, any missing side if you're already given two out of the three sides of a right triangle. First, you're going to want to identify which one is your hypotenuse, which will always be across from the right angle. This one, you need to make sure is labeled C. The other two, it doesn't really matter what you label them as, so I'll just go ahead and say that this is A and B. The Pythagorean theorem states that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So I'm going to write out our equation and then substitute in the values. X squared is equal to... 15 squared plus 8 squared. When I go to simplify this, I find that 15 squared is 225 plus 64. And we find that x squared will be equal to 289. Now, our next step in this is we're going to have to take the square root in order to solve for x. So I'm going to get that x is equal to plus or minus 17. Oops. Now, once you get to this point, you need to see if both positive and negative answers make sense. And if we're solving for the length of a side in a triangle, it doesn't make sense for us to have a negative answer. So the only one that we will keep is that x is going to be equal to 17. You might also notice that the way I set this up might be backwards from what you're used to seeing. A lot of people usually say the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. However, this setup is going to be helpful for you when we end up getting to the next section. So if you could, practice writing it as c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. All right. There's something called Pythagorean triples. And Pythagorean triples is not just three sets of Pythagoras. Instead, what it is is three positive integers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. Here we have some examples of some Pythagorean triples. 5, 12, and 15, because 15 squared is equal to 5 squared plus 12 squared. 3, 4, and 5, because 5 squared is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared. 4, 6, and 10, because 10 squared is equal to 4 squared plus 6 squared. Notice that the longest side length is always going to be C, which is your hypotenuse. Now, there are some non-examples for this. And that's because you have to think about what a positive integer is. There might be some numbers that work in the Pythagorean theorem, but are not actually all positive integers. So this, for example, is something that will work in the Pythagorean theorem, but I have 4 radical 13. So that's not an integer, and we're not going to be able to use it. Integers are whole numbers, and we're going to be looking at only the positive integers. So it has to be positive whole numbers that work in the Pythagorean theorem to be considered a Pythagorean triple. And that's really it. It's a short lesson, and we'll have lots of opportunities to practice this tomorrow in class. And in honor of Valentine's Day, we have a Valentine's Day theme joke. So what did the paper clip say to the magnet? Well, is that I find you very attractive.